Hi and welcome to another episode. What I've got here is the CD car cassette adapter, compact disc digital audio, play your personal CD player through your car stereo. And then we have a Yeritika, no, a CD cassette adapter by Discwasher Digital, digital even, and it explains on the back and what you're supposed to do. And really all that it is, is that you've got your sound device that makes uh, you know, I've got an earphone jack on it, and you plug this into your 3.5 millimeter. You press play on that, and then you press play on your tape deck in your car, and it moves the sound across, the audio across, the music across, whichever is, is happening, and pump it out through your speakers. All good and well. Um, but in the past, and I've seen lots of YouTube videos, and but in the past, there's been a few uh, videos on YouTube showing that it can be used with retro computers. Now I did buy these a couple of years ago and that's what I was using until I really got into cassettes and wanted to actually have the originals. They do work well but they do sort of depend on which one you get and then it also sort of depends on your um, tape deck or cassette deck. It uh, There is a bit of ifism because basically they're all sort of you know Every other company is making one, at least they were once upon a time, that made these sort of gadgets. Um, and some were made to good quality, some were made to really good quality, and some were made to... I am not putting that in my tape deck, let's put it that way. Now these ones luckily are pretty good. I have found that one of them works better with one style of computer than the other, even through the same tape deck. I don't understand why, but it's true. Um, but as I say, it depends to you, so I'm not going to recommend one over the other. But just to let you know, this one was slightly more expensive, and this is the one, as you can see by the wire, I've been using the most. But this isn't what we're here to talk about today, because there's other videos on, on YouTube that explain all of that wonderfully. What I'm here to talk to you about is these things. Now, again, I bought these earlier in the year. I was going to make a video Never got round to it because I moved on to other videos, other episodes. So let's get these ones on. As you can see, I've not even opened this. This is a Bluetooth one. So I was thinking, oh, I could send audio across from my phone. Because, especially for the Spectrum, because there's some nice apps on there that you can use. I mean, you can do it for the Commodore 64. And some of you will know I've modded my Amstrad uh, 61, yeah, 6128 you know, the, the more modern version of it. And it doesn't have a tape deck, but I modded it, so it does have access to a, um, cassettes. And then there's this one, which actually works off of micro SD cards. Or is it actually full size SD cards? Sorry, full size SD cards. So let's get these open. This one just pops open. I've never actually used it, and I can probably prove that. Are they even, yep, there you go. Still got the battery protector in it. And then I get the cassette and it has some instructions. Well, a leaflet. MP3 cassette player. Um, yeah, it uses SD cards up to eight gigabytes. Um, blah, 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 blah. Basically stick some tunes on and press play. And it's even got an equalizer built in, which is interesting. Now, I'm showing you this way around, but actually the buttons are this way around because that's the equalizer. Volume up and down, uh, rewind, fast forward, play and pause, and of course, you've got the same sort of things on the remote control. In fact, it even has um, repeat, I think. It doesn't even tell you what these buttons do. I'm assuming that's repeat. What could U slash SD stand for? Who knows? We'll figure it out later. So, this needs charging up, but they don't even... Oh, they have. They have, they have, they have. I tell a lie. Charging box, which is actually a European one, but of course, any mobile phone, cell phone charger will probably do very fine because it is five volts at 100 milliamps is what it pushes out. So, equivalent. Um, obviously you can use 5 volts anything, 
uh, sorry, five volts, it must be five volts, but anything above 1000 milliamps or one amp will be fine because it'll only draw what it actually needs. It's got the car charger to put into your cigarette lighter, a pair of headphones, cheapo looking things, um, and then a charging cable, which is a micro USB. So I'll get this charged up. Move that to the side. Oh, I need a pair of scissors, obviously. Back in a second. And with television magic, or YouTube magic, whichever you want to say, ta-da! So we've got the cassette, which it too needs to be charged up. We'll have a quick look at that in a minute. Um, it reckons, oh, wait a minute, what does it say on the back of here? For, sorry, I know I'm jumping backwards and forwards, but does it say anything on there for the back of things? It just reckons um, you get up to six hours of gameplay. There it is. You can just about see what it says there. I'll hold that up. So on this one, you have to use a bit rate of 32 kilobits per second to 256 kilobits per second. Um, for constant bit rate or variable bit rate, it's in stereo. It's got a 450 milliamp length of hours. Six, over six hours playback time, it reckons, rechargeable by... USB supports the cards up to eight gigabytes and so on. So we reckon it gets over six hours with this one. And with this Bluetooth one, it reckons you get four plus hours. Um, but this one also has a microphone in it. So it's got a built-in microphone and so that you can use, uh, you know, talk over your phone through the whole of your car. Dun, dun, dun. Can't do that with CDs. Right, so move that there. We have a charging cable yet again. Tiny little leaflet. Nothing of interest on the back. Well, obviously, because we've had this card sticking at the back. What's this all about? This is a manual. <laughs> Can you read that? I mean, I know there's some glare, but there you go. Can you read that? That's just, that's just silliness. I know it's in lots of different languages, but if you don't need glasses before this, you're going to need it by the end of it. It reckons it takes two hours to charge it, but you get four to five hours of playtime. Controls are blah, 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 blah. You know, sync it up to your Bluetooth. dum de dum de dum Um power save modes and all that fun stuff and how to answer the phone from within inside your car but this thing how do we get into here open microphone door here how do we open microphone door here so I was doing it off camera again There we go. And you can have your microphone. Dangling out of your car. Cassette, you know, for the ones that go in sideways like that. You'd have this dangling about and you can talk on it. Hmm. Interesting. Or if it's one that goes in like that. You can have it dangling out that side. But of course, that's not really a feature we're too much interested in because we just want to use this on a cassette deck for a computer. But it is interesting, a little extra. All right, so that's all nicely closed up. So I will come back with a computer. These particular cassettes Tell you what, that one's a little bit heavier than this one. Um, all nicely charged up, and we'll take it for there. Now, while you're waiting, yeah. have a gamble on which computer I'm going to use. No cheating. Okay, so I've moved everything around. We have a winner. Not just going to tell you that just yet, though. I am not sponsored by these people, but the great guys over at Retro Protect, which are on Amy Bay, 
and we find them they make nice covers for lots of different computers this one's for the spectrum next so yep it's all nice and everything like that all it does is just keep the dust off um, just under 20 pounds does its job very happy with it right so let's go back to the cassettes this one rubbish well, at least for me with this tape deck you know your mileage, your mileage may vary um, I just can't get this one to work properly at all using like my phone as an mp3 player type thing just just can't get it to work properly I've never had much fun with it um, I managed to get it to work once with a different tape deck but this one personally I wouldn't bother then we go on to this one this one I do like as I said before I've used it plenty of times um, at least in the eject mechanism of this tape deck push it all the way to the right and then feed it down the front and it just just sits in and you can close the lid properly in fact I'll show you leave a little bit of slack but not a lot and it goes in there and it's fine and then you've got your whoa it is fine honest um, and you've got your 3.5 millimeter jack at the other end it all nicely turns around and everything like that but uh, when you eject, go to eject it doesn't really want to because the eject mechanism is on this side but the sensor to check if your tape can be recorded on or not is on this side of course with these ones it can't be so I have to press eject and then pull it up a little bit though yanking on the cable did seem to make it pop up right so I recommend this one this one though comes back into play again in a moment this one which is the SD card fancy one now the problem with this one is the LED uh, not the LED the infrared receiver is at the end of the cassette now that makes sense for the car type ones where it goes in like that and this would be sticking out at the end you still got um, the sensor there so a nice little remote control where I put that this would work with it but of course when it's in there it's all hidden away it would have been kind of nice if they had put it there and then one in the middle because then lots of cassettes have a little window and it would have worked from there who knows maybe I'll faff around and see if I can get into it but sadly there isn't oh there is screws Ah, screws so maybe what I'll do is mess around make a little hole and put the sensor there and maybe come back to this a future product but this one though <laughs> it doesn't play just mp3s it does play WAV files as well now I actually managed to make a game load by using this because it has a 3.5 millimeter jack on it so that was inside there and then this was hooked up like that so using a modern cassette to run a modern cassette to ah, you get the idea it's a bit of a silly combination because obviously you could just use your phone or your tablet or computer blah 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 you could do it all that way but you know if you're going mobile <laughs> it might be an interesting way of doing things um, you know if you don't want to have a load of things on your phone you could uh, take that around to a friend's house and show them the magic that you can do with that one now the ultimate winner is this now I will say if you wanted to play music in your old car that has a tape deck in it I would get the white one with the SD card in that seems to work best for audio quality when you're listening to it when you're listening to this one coming audio coming through as if you're doing some music there's it's like you can hear the motors running around and stuff like that there's a lot of interference to your ear but as a computer it doesn't seem to care now I loaded up obviously don't need the microphone in there flick the switch little blue light flashes away Bluetooth is very easy um, let me just bring up my phone. Dun, dun, dun. Where is the Bluetooth cassette? Now you can see everything else that I've got there, but um, the cassette BT is the way that it uh, shows itself. And then for running software, you've got possibilities depending on your computer. Play ZX, 
MSX to cassette and tap down to it. Um, all three of these work really really nicely with this on different styles of computer. Um, obviously you make your own choices. Um, some of them you need to supply your own games and some that you don't. I'm not going to show you loading up and everything like that because you're just going to take my word for it that it actually works. No point boring you. Um, actually, let's do the BMX one. I did start a BMX simulator. Let's get down to business on this then. Just to, I wasn't going to bore you with it, but I'm going to now, so get ready. So there's the Spectrum Next. Raring to go to load a 48k game. I shall bring up PlayZX. Bring up BMX Simulator. I would highly recommend, of course, on your phone that you turn off all notifications. So let's put some power on. See, all the lights have come on. It's getting raring to go. Press play. You do have to play around the volume just right. You do have to get it just right, and obviously the volume from your phone just right. It's a bit of tweaking. You'll have to play around until you get it. And then you can press play. I'll not show you um, everything, because I've said I don't want to get done for copyright. You can see it's loaded up the BMX. And then I'll just let it start loading a bit of the picture just to prove a point. And as you can see, it does actually load everything through. Well, we definitely seem to have a winner here. Let's turn all this off. Right. So, get yourself an ION cassette adapter Bluetooth lowercase i capital TR20 capital A. Definitely seems to work fantastically with the Spectrum next at least. I can't see why it wouldn't work with the other, you know, machines that uh, take cassettes. There's too many to name. Um, but yeah, at least with this though, it means that you've not got a wire dangling out, which is potentially breaking the closing mechanism in some way, springs and levers and latches and all that sort of stuff. So it might be worthwhile paying a little bit extra. Well, actually, it's quite a bit extra compared to the just dangly wire ones. Maybe three times the price. Um, but get yourself one of those if you want to play around with cassettes and loading them in real time. Obviously, I don't think you can record to them. But for playback, it does come in handy, so at least you know then, you know, if there's a certain game that you definitely want to play and do you want to get hold of it and everything like that, of getting the real one, but, you know, until then. And also, of course, it means that you're not wearing down your real tapes. If you just want to have them all looking pretty on your shelf, you still get the fun of loading the cassette in real time versus not ruining the originals. I hope this has been informative. As I said before, that one for gaming that one for listening, and as always, happy gaming.